we've got some stuff going on in the industry right now with the writer strike, and it sure looks like if you hear the talk and the rumblings in the background that maybe actors and directors are going to be joining that strike pretty soon when their contracts start to come up in the next month or so. Um, so we've already had some guests on that talk about with the with the digital world now they're basically the you know when they step on set the first thing they do is go into this semi and they're digitally created you know with thousands of cameras and they're told basically that they're doing that so that they can place them wherever they want to whenever they want to uh down the line and right. you know and we've had one of our guests said um do we get paid if you place us somewhere like kind of a thing you know and everybody was joking on shut up shut up but and we recently we had um, James Earl Jones, the legend, you know, sign over the rights to his voice, right, for them yeah. to be able to recreate his voice from old recordings to move forward with Darth Vader. So I'm curious with the whole AI debate going on right now and the creation of them writing scripts or the digital de aging and and basically creating people that aren't there in, in these shows. Are you nervous about? the industry shift that way to where as a voice actor, they can say, Hey, we've got enough of this guy over the years. We can recreate sure. this voice anytime we want to. Now, maybe it's time we start allowing the technology to do these voices instead of the real people. Are you nervous about that? And towards the push in the industry? Definitely am. I mean, it's, it's definitely already within their possibility. Right. I mean, they, I, I, <laughs> We talk about side jobs and real jobs. Mm -hmm. One of my other jobs is that I write uh, training about IT security. Oh, wow. And one of the series that we write is called The Inside Man. And it's just for companies. Companies use it to do their training. But it's like a Netflix style series yeah. um, that we shoot in the UK. And we're talking about deep fakes and AI and those kind of things. So I look at these things a lot through that world. And the, the capability is already there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you need anywhere from five to 20 minutes of, of, of a person's voice to be able to do a credible audio deep fake. And there's probably 300 hours of my voice. Right, right. Here's there. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's part of the reason why I don't think the, the anime dub actor world would ever be able to truly like unionize and demand the rates that a first, a first run actor would get uh, uh, to do it because the scripts are there, the voices are there, and they even have the model of the Japanese. You can tell an AI to say, have Rob McGollum's voice say this with the same level of intensity that this Japanese actor said it and make it fit the flaps. Oh, and an goodness. AI can figure that out already. So so if I came in and said, I'm going to triple the rates that I demand for my <laughs> services, right. that would be instantly. That would be, uh, yeah, that, that'd be AI Rob real quick. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think I think the real way forward that it's going to go for for – on-camera actors for voiceover for animation is that it is going to be much harder to get the smaller roles. And if you are the James Earl Jones of the world or even the Brian Cranston's, there will be this rate if you want Brian Cranston to voice your Ford commercial. There will be this rate if you want the rights to the AI recreation of Brian Cranston. Mm. And he will still get paid an amount for that and the unions will fight over that it's going to take forever to figure that out we yeah. think that we think the writer strike right now over streaming rights is going to get ugly when it comes down to determining those rates it's going to be a weird and ugly battle but i think that's what it's going to have to come down to agreed because they can put anyone anywhere in anything right now and eventually you're going to have an agent for yourself and then you're going to have an agent for your virtual self mm. and you're going to have an agent for your virtual voice. And those will be put out there just like the licensing firm that licenses like music. Yeah. They want to play an Eminem track in a thing. They have to pay a certain amount. If they want someone else to sing that Eminem track, they pay a different amount. There'll be a scale for whether it is real Rob McCollum or virtual Rob McCollum. Um, uh, and I have no idea. I, and I think, I think for a lot of, a lot of ways it's going to mean that the the top tier is going to continue to make tons of money but mm -hmm. the amount of money that the rest of the world makes is going to get shrunk smaller and smaller and smaller
Yeah, it's a very interesting situation because, I mean, it it feels like a lot of things are being pushed towards, like, the quote-unquote freelance gig, right? Or at least that's what they're talking about with the writers. And it's terrifying because that's when you come to think about healthcare. That's when you come to think about, you know, like, when you pass on, how will all of this continue to go on with your estate? And, like, all of these different things. So that's why, yeah, it's very interesting. And, yeah, I... The last strike was 100 days. I feel like this will at least get to that and maybe even further than that with the streaming. So I don't know. It's well, you just brought up a really good point because most of these unions have like guidelines and a certain amount of time that you have to put to qualify for the benefits, yeah. right? For your health care and stuff. And if you're right. drastically reducing the amount of time that you're able to work, you're basically telling these people the likelihood of you qualifying to get enough time to get your health care, it's going to be hard. And, and so, yeah, yeah, that's, that's definitely, I can mm. see why the unions are fighting because the unions are like, well, well they have to work that why, much. You know, everyone railed against socialized medicine or government funded uh, you know, like like they have in the UK, a national health service where everyone had a minimum level of health care provided for them and said this was all, you know, this is wrong and socialization, all that. But it it changes the argument. It does. In these union things, if like, oh, I have health care, so I can now be a little freer on the kinds of jobs and the kind of contracts I take. But but like Texas is a, is a, is a non-union state, is a right to work state. Right. Mm-hmm. So I am not a union member, but I support um, the union causes because so many of my actor friends and, and projects that I work on are. Um, but the fact that they they made healthcare an employer's problem changes all of these contract Everything. negotiations yep. across, across the, the board. But also that idea that they've gone to the the, the chunk buyout, like we're going to pay you X hundred or X thousand or X tens of thousands of dollars right. for this project. And then you will never make any more. And if this becomes the number one thing on Netflix for 10 years running, you're you're done and you're out. That's what they're trying to do to the writers and some of the producers and directors. And so that's why I knew this was coming. I work a lot in the UK. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're trying, we're wondering if this is going to mean there's all of a sudden a big demand for UK products right. on Netflix. Amazon because nothing new is coming out of the U.S. right now. Yeah, that's a good point. Not for a while. 